You're going to need notebooks, we're going to need a magnifying glass and a beverage of choice to get through this book. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten. You are all going to have to put on your detective caps because Detective Kirsten is back at it again. We are going to be trying to solve the murder at the vicarage by Agatha Christie before we get to that re revelation. We're gonna try it. We're gonna hope. This one we need to solve the fact that the Colonel has been found shot dead in the clergyman's study. Who's done it? Why have they done it? It's going to be a fun time. I'm really, really excited. It does mean that this vlog's going to be a bit more spoiler filled, but I thought, you know what, if we're going to be doing a detective thing, it's better to do it with a classic book that's been around for quite a while, rather than a more recent murder mystery. That was the thinking. Regardless, you're all going to be coming with me. So, you're going to need notebooks, we're going to need a magnifying glass and a beverage of choice to get through this book. That is the goal this week, is to solve this murder mystery. Detective Kirsten, back at it again. She's been aching to get out of that box because we love it. I enjoy it so much trying to solve these and I get so carried away so I have a dedicated notebook this time and we are going to do this. So thank you for joining, let me know if you're going to try and solve the mystery with me, see if we can work it out by the end of this video. Let's do this, let's get Detective Kirsten back out of the box and having fun. So let's see what we can solve. <music> quite a bit of progress with the case since we last spoke so make sure you've got that beverage because this update is going to be a long one. As we know we are trying to solve the mystery of who killed the colonel in the vicarage. We have our notebook, we have quite a lot of notes. This is what we started off with and we have now progressed onto this page and this. I spent quite a lot of time yesterday where I didn't read quite as much of the book but just finalising thoughts and things that I had been thinking of and seeing where we're at. So we are up to chapter 11 page 94 so it has been slow going but I've been doing that on purpose because we're making so many observations. I'm going to talk you through all my thoughts, the list of suspects and where we are up to. Starting off with the list of suspects, I was suspicious of everybody, absolutely everybody. In the first couple of chapters we get told that there are a lot of people that want the colonel dead so I was suspecting people straight off the bat so I'm just going to run through them we're going to talk about whether they are still suspects and go from there so first of all we have Dennis Dennis is the nephew to Len who is our clergyman he is the one narrating this story so Len, Len it's not Len we know it's not Len but his nephew, Dennis, he's 16 years old, you know, frivolous. He, he likes having fun. He really enjoys playing tennis. He gets on very well with his uncle's wife and the daughter of the Colonel. He is suspicious, but he's not up there at the moment circumstances and stuff have made it so it's less likely. We then have Mary. Mary is basically the, the maid at the vicarage. She I don't think is that person. She started off with potentially being an accomplice just because of a throwaway comment that Dennis made. However, she does have a motive and the motive is that the Colonel put her lover in jail. And we find this out later on in the book, but again, it's still unlikely. I don't think it's Mary, although she does have a motive. We then have Dr. Stone. We don't know much about Dr. Stone at this point. We know that Dr. Stone and the Colonel had a violent quarrel the other day. I don't know much about him. He's supposedly an archeologist who's been digging up these barrows. Is he actually an archeologist? That's a question of mine. But again, I don't, because of the timing which we'll get to the timeline. I don't think Dr. Stone did it, but he is still a suspicious person just because of the things around him. We have Miss Clam. Miss Clam is Dr. Stone's assistant. There seemed to be a idea of a scandal between those two, 
but other than that I don't she's not high on my list of suspects either that could be a red heron just because she's not high on this list of suspects she seems really vapid and just silly at this moment in time I don't suspect her we then have Griselda. Griselda is Len's wife. Again, she's someone that I kind of suspect, but also based on timings, if that's all true, then no. But she does make a few throwaway comments about the fact that Len is so easy to deceive, that he should embezzle money, which is an important point that we're going to get back to. So just lots of little throwaway comments of, you know, her saying to Len that he doesn't really know anything about her and all of this. I think she's a lot more smarter and stuff than what Len gives her credit for. We then have Lawrence Reddin. Lawrence Reddin is an artist. He is having an affair with the Colonel's wife. Now the Colonel threw the artist out of his house that he wasn't wanting it in there. Not for having an affair with his wife, but for painting his daughter, Lettuce, in just a bathing suit. I mean, I get that, but also how, how do you miss the affair part? Anyway, so, but it's not Lawrence. We know it's not Lawrence. He admitted to the murder, but we know that he was lying. So it's definitely not Lawrence. So he came off the su list of suspects. Then we have Anne. Anne is the wife of the colonel, the one that is having the affair with the artist. Again, it's not her. She also lied about doing it to save the artist and the artist lied to save her. It was this whole big thing. Either way, they're not doing it. However, Anne, I think, knows more than what she's letting on and the artist doesn't have a clue because he thought it was Anne and that's why he lied to give himself up because he thought Anne did it. And so he was like, oh my God, it was me. It was me to save his lover. So... The artist really doesn't know anything, but Anne, I think, knows more than she's letting on. Then we have Lettuce, and Lettuce is the daughter, as we've already established. Now, yesterday I did some more extensive notes on her because Lettuce is constantly saying that she needs money. Miss Clem overheard her saying that she needs a job, and these two are backed up by page 88 and 11. She doesn't get on with Anne, her stepmother, at all, and she's playing on Anne's love for the artist and that's proven on page 61 and she's also lost a yellow beret whether that actually comes into play I don't know but I made a note of it just in case and in general her character is one where she puts on this appearance of being like really not with it very dithering and stuff however I and Miss Marple actually made a comment that she is a lot more sly than what she makes herself out to be like she's a lot lot smarter so i think lettuce is a high suspect we also have hawks hawks is a curate again we don't know too much about him we know that he doesn't get on with the colonel at all they've been quarreling a lot but he did overhear the exact time colonel was going to be at len's house and that's on page 38 and he looked like so much dread on his face when he had heard that so whether he's involved or just knows that of someone that wants to do him in I don't know and then the last suspect that I have is Mrs Lestrange again I've given her more notes Mrs Lestrange is somebody that not many people know much about she's also in some sort of trouble and that's proven on page 23 she is new to the town she is not seen as very welcoming and stuff like nobody really knows much about her she is a complete mystery but she is in trouble she also went to see the colonel the day before the murder in the evening she waited to see him after dinner as they were in the middle of dinner and she was there for about 30 minutes and then the colonel saw her out and that was page 72 so whether she's actually the murderer or again whether there's just other other stuff going on I don't know my highest two suspects are lettuce and Mrs Lestrange and also Dr Stone but I just don't know enough about him so those are the three and then I'm still I'm in an iron about Dennis Griselda the wife of the vicar Hawks and Mary although she's low on the list so that, that's all the people. It's a lot, I know. Then we have the timeline that's been established. I had it all messy, so I neatened it all up. So at 5.30, Len Alvica was called away, and this turns out to be a false call. He was called away under false pretenses. And at 5.30, Colonel started out in his car. At 5.45, a Colonel was seen in the village by his wife. At 18.05, the clock was not over. Now this is important because the clock has the wrong time on it. The clock is 15 minutes fast. So it was important to note that. At 18.15, the Colonel's waiting in the study. Also at 18.15 or 6.15, and it's coming from the lane and then goes to the studio. She was seen by Miss Marple. And then we also have the artist, Mr. Reddin, 
meets Anne in the studio. At 1825, Miss Marple heard a shot. This was corroborated, corroborated? By Mary in the kitchen. She also heard a shot. They both assumed it was from the woods. At 1830, the, it's the assumed time of death. Then we have the wife, the artist, both meet Dr. Stone and Miss Clem in the lane by the house. And then at seven o'clock, Len finds the Colonel in the study and at 7.45, Dennis arrives back from tennis, which is why I'm saying it's unlikely to be Dennis because of the timing. And also why it's unlikely to be Dr. Stone and Miss Clem if they were both met in the lane at the time of the murder taking place. So based on all of that, it narrows down the suspects to Hawks, the curate, Mrs. Lestrange, and Miss Lettuce because they were not accounted for. His wife, Griselda, at the time was meant to be in London and she hadn't yet returned, so it's unlikely to be her. So that is where we're up to. I'm sorry that was so much, but it's been really helpful because we do get little maps and things, which is really helpful to see what's going on. That one is of the outside of the lane and then we also have one of the study as well. So this is all really helpful. I love the fact that we're getting that. Now there is just one thing that to me isn't making sense and that is that he was supposed that the colonel was supposedly writing a note at the time he was shot and the note says 6:20 but the clock is 15 minutes fast. So either he wrote this at 6:05 which isn't possible because he wasn't in the building at that point or somebody was writing it for him and didn't know that the clock was fast and then the clock got knocked over two minutes afterwards. So it's really interesting. So that's, that's something that I feel like is going to come back up is that note because it just doesn't seem to fit the timeline unless of course the colonel didn't use the clock at 6.20 and wrote his own note himself looking at like a pocket watch or something. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. It's so good, it is so good. Right, I need to get on, get ready for work and let's continue on with our investigation. Unfortunately, we have not made much more progress with our investigation. In terms of the document that we have been given, we are now up to chapter 17, page 159. And this last chunk did not give us lots. However, it did expand a little bit more into detailing. So as I have said, we have our list of suspects and it has confirmed that unfortunately the suspicions of Dr. Stone, it's very unlikely that he managed to make this crime just because of the fact of the timings of everything. So it's, it's very, very unlikely that he did this crime. That's one thing that we have expanded upon. Oh, and the note, the note we have made quite a bit of progress on. On. So it has been confirmed that the handwriting between the actual note and the time, yeah we didn't actually get given a sample of the note which I think would have been very helpful, but it has been confirmed that the 620, the timestamp at the top of the note, is actually a different hand to the rest of the note which is very interesting so it definitely indicates that somebody else wrote that to try and put people off of the scent of everything that was happening. It also gets later confirmed by Anne, the colonel's wife, that the letter, the note that was scrawled, doesn't even look like his handwriting at all, like either parts of it, that normally he has very neat, tidy writing and this note was a rough scrawl and so it's not like his writing at all, which is interesting. It could be that he just wrote it in a rush or it could be that someone else has written it, but that doesn't quite make sense because why why would you do that? I'm not sure about that one. So, but it's an interesting development with the note. And other than that, the only other main thing that has been developed is Hawks, our curate. He had a moment in here where he was seeming a bit more like 
frazzled and not sure what was going on and he just seems very suspicious he was very anxious to have somebody committing this crime and was very keen to pin it on somebody that is very unlikely to have done this crime and it just seemed very unusual and so he's definitely still at the top of my suspect list. Otherwise we had a little bit more interaction with Mrs Lestrange which kind of adds to the suspicious things around her. Whether she actually did the crime or not I'm not 100% sure but I do think she was the colonel's ex-wife. We don't, if I'm remembering this correctly, the colonel moved after his first wife left him. Nobody's seen her so it would stand to reason that potentially she is his ex-wife or maybe like the sister of the ex-wife, something around that and she got herself in trouble and so she's come back needing help maybe. So that's what I think's happened with her. Still high on the list of suspects just because we're not sure what's going on but yes I think that's about it. Yesterday I did spend quite a lot of time going back through this just to see if there's anything I've missed because you never know. The only thing, ah, something that I forgot to mention yesterday which I did say to you, money's important, remember that, I'll get back to that later and I, I don't even think I did. I think the motive behind this is money. At the very start of this book Lem the vicar was telling us about an incident where somebody donated some money to the church, they were doing like their collections after sermon, and they insisted they put in quite a high domination of money, but when it came to counting it, it wasn't in there anymore. The vicar was a bit like, oh well, we are, we're all in old age, forget what we're doing and stuff, and the woman was adamant, like, hell no. The colonel believed her, and so the colonel was going to do an investigation with the vicar, they were going to go through all of the accounts to see if any money has gone missing. I think that's why he was murdered, because that's why he was in the study at that point. So I think somebody's been taking money from it, which is why Lettuce is high on the suspect list, because she she has made quite a few comments about wanting money. I also think Hawks could potentially be taking money out of the church and that's why he's in such a state. I also think even the vicar's wife, Giselda, I think it's less likely but she has made quite a few comments as I mentioned yesterday already about the fact of embezzling money and the fact that Len would believe anything she said and he's so trusting and all of this. So they're all potentials, that's what I think is going on. So I'm afraid there's not been many updates, just more of an expansion into what we already know but we are hoping today that we're going to get through a good chunk of this. So fingers crossed we're going to see. But yes, I am having a good time. At this point though, I'm thinking did everyone just band together and do it together? And they all gave each other like cross alibis and stuff because there's enough people that wanted him dead. So did they all just do it? Like conspire to do this? I don't know, but we're gonna see. The only person that I know for definite wasn't involved in any way is the artist because there's no way and he was genuinely so shocked and he genuinely thought that his lover had killed her husband and that's why he gave himself it. So he is the only purely innocent one in all of this as far as I'm concerned. Everyone else is a suspect and will remain that way until I know for sure. But yeah, I think even if they didn't commit the crime, I think people have still had something to play in this. Like for instance, Dr. Stone quickly expand on Dr Stone. So he is the archaeologist. He, I didn't realise, but the barrow is actually in the colonel's land and they've been arguing over that so it could be that he's been trying to get rid of him for that and it just came that enough people have reasons to go that, that Dr Stone helped. I'm not sure. It's just there's lots of little things so it could be that it was everyone. The only person that I know so far for 100% doesn't have a solid alibi is Mrs Lestrange because she was at home alone apparently. That's interesting. Otherwise everyone else seems to have been seen at different locations or was busy doing something so I guess we're gonna find out. Anyway the investigation continues let me know your suspicions and theories in the comments below and uh, yes there is a baby crying so we should probably get going. <laughs> at the end of our mystery we do not have long left to go at all like we literally just have this little bit so it is 
going to be solved today. From the document we are up to chapter 23 page 217 and I feel at this point we need to start saying who we actually suspect, like officially who do we think. So we have an updated suspects list and I have four main people on there. I have two that are top suspects, one being Lettuce, as we know, the Colonel's daughter. There has just been some things about her, especially in the later developments. So we know that she has been trying to frame her stepmother and she actually went in after the crime to leave an earring that was Anne's to make it seem like she was lying and that she actually did this crime. She also is very annoyed at Anne is in general and I think part of that not only just because she's her stepmom and animosity between that but also because the artist Mr Redden loved Anne instead of Lettuce so I think that has some role to play especially because I can't remember if I mentioned this bit or not but Mrs Ridley received a call at 6 30 so just after the shots were fired and it was quite a aggressive Call, where it would basically be telling her to stop being such a gossip and have nothing to do with like gossiping and stuff and it was really quite horrible but that call came from Mr Redden's cottage so it just makes me think that Lettuce is trying to implicate a lot of things around these two people. I still don't fully think that she committed the crime. We know that her alibi no longer works. She originally said she was at tennis till late in the evening but we found out from Dennis unwittingly that she left early and she made Dennis stay at the tennis club for her while she left at half past five. So that's quite surprising. So Lettuce is suspect, but I think it's more that she's trying to stir things, get people into trouble as a consequence of things, rather than her committing the crime. The person that actually points to committing the crime more is actually Griselda, the vicar's wife, is one of the few people that knew Mr. Redden had a gun. She also lied when she said she was going to be in London because her train that she said was going to get back on is the 6.50 train and that's the time it was going to arrive. However, that train was delayed by half hour and she arrived the usual time she would if she had got off that train and it was like just after seven. That isn't possible. The train hadn't arrived until 7.20 so she would have been later home. So she's lied about where she was. I think that she did the call to get the vicar away and I think she's the one that did it. She's really high up there. She is the only one that makes sense. Like she knows about the clock being fast and the fact that to mess with the timings of everything, she should put the clock back. And like I said, the train being wrong, she knew about the gun. She's made so many comments about the fact that Len trusts her so explicitly and you know, how he shouldn't and stuff. Like she's made so many comments. I don't know, I kind of think it's her. I mean, maybe it's just her being bored housewife and just having a bit of fun with every think but it does seem so suspect. So Lettuce and Griselda at the top but I think Griselda's number one and then Lettuce number two. Hawks is still up there. I mean we haven't had any more from him but there was a sentence where the vicar was talking to the colonel about justice and mercy and the vicar had said how he would rather have mercy but the curate Hawks has twisted that sentence and was very much like he deserved the justice that was given to him just like you said. So it could be a very like like fanatic oh but I did this for you and all of this like we gave him justice and so it could be that so he's my third then Mrs Lestrange now again with Mrs Lestrange I don't think she actually did it but I do 100% think that she's the ex-wife of the colonel especially over something that the colonel said so they were heard having a bit of an alteration when she went to see him the evening before and she had said to him weren't sure on all the particulars but he ended up replying saying how you're not going to see her you're not coming anywhere near her which I think means lettuce I think she's lettuce's mum and she then says to the colonel you could be dead tomorrow now that could just be a offhand comment rather than her actually going out of her way to kill him. It could be if the colonel's saying, nope, you're not allowed to see your daughter and stuff. And she's like, bugger this, I'm getting him out of the way. 
but she hasn't tried to connect with Lettuce or anything, although that would be suspicious in of itself, so I just don't think it's her, but she's, she's fourth. Everyone else has been cleared. Dennis has been cleared because he was at tennis the whole time, and that's been confirmed that he was definitely there and that he didn't leave early. I did think it was him for a while because of the fact that he loves Lettuce, and I thought that maybe he did this as this grand gesture to show her how much he loves her, but I just don't think so. Dr. Stone, I mean, as I mentioned before, the timing did didn't actually work however it has been uncovered that Dr Stone is not actually Dr Stone which is what my suspicions were that he wasn't actually an archaeologist we don't know his real name but we know he's been pretending to be this archaeologist so I think that in the barrow the colonel had something like priceless on his land that he wasn't quite aware of and they've been taking it which is further held up by that theory because Miss Marple saw Miss Cram going into the woods really late at night with a suitcase so I think it's it's that those two have been working together. I don't think they have anything to do with the murder, but obviously they're profiting from it anyway. So I think that's more of a happy coincidence for them. Could be wrong, obviously, but personally, I don't think so. It will be interesting to find out who Dr. Stone is, but I reckon he's just someone that found out about this and wants to get a quick buck. And yeah, everyone else we've already cleared. So my final answer, I'm locking it in, is the vicar's wife in number one. And then I have three more suspects, and that would be Lettuce in number two, Hawks in number three, and Mrs. Lestrange in number four. I, I don't think it's her though. That's what I think. We're gonna see, we're gonna find out. We're finishing it today. We are going to find out who it is. That is the updated suspect list and I'm just I'm really enjoying this it's been so good definitely gonna have to do more of these in future it's been absolutely amazing I have written all over this book well underlined let's not go too far um but yeah underlined all of these parts I feel like I should have tabbed to keep track of like my different suspects and having the different tabs because that would have made life so much easier to then go back through this because that's what's been slowing me down a lot. I find out a piece of information, I'm like, oh, I think that relates to so-and-so and then I have to flick back through the whole thing to find it. Whereas next time I think I'm gonna have tabs. So for my suspects, if things are linking up to that particular suspect, have a color and that way I can just flick back to it. That's what I'm gonna do in future. I'm so excited. Let's go and finish this mystery and see if my suspicions were correct. Well, we failed. Utterly utterly failed the audacity i had earlier in this vlog of saying how it was 100 percent not the person that did it yeah detective skills we just no unfortunately not this one eluded us we did get a couple things right so let's start there the person that was taking money from the church was hawks so that was confirmed the curate he didn't shoot the colonel but he, that's why he was so like stressed all the time, or why he was terrified of the fact that they were going into the study in the first place, why he spent so much time being nervous wreck, because obviously if it was found out that he was taking the money, then that's a high motive to then kill the colonel, and it looks really bad, but it wasn't him, and he confessed to taking money in that, but that's it. Mrs Lestrange was the colonel's wife, which I've already confirmed, but she was dying um, and that's why she was in trouble she was wanting to reconnect with Lettuce her daughter that's that's all she wanted and that's why her and the colonel were seen to be arguing and stuff is because that is all she wanted and the night in question where she doesn't have an alibi she was actually meeting Lettuce which is why Lettuce left tennis early to go see her mother they've made plan to leave the country together and spend the last amount of time that they've got together you know reconnect after all this time so that was a lovely little storyline in there Dr Stone we never found out who he really is he didn't come back he went off to London and we haven't seen him since but he was very much just trying to steal from the colonel Miss Cram is saying that she didn't know anything about that, that she kind of went along with what he said and stuff. She's looking for new employment. Um, but again, nothing to do with the actual like murder or anything. It was just coincidence. So that brings us down to who actually did this crime. Uh, because it wasn't Giselda, the 
Vicar's wife. It wasn't her. She did come back from London earlier than what she said she was going to, uh, but that is because her and Dennis played a little prank call to Mrs. Price Ridley to say stop gossiping because she was putting around about a lot of gossip about Griselda and the artist being together and stuff. So they decided to put a little prank call in. So again, wasn't either of those two. No, no, no. The people that it was, was the people that I said wasn't going to be doing it, like 100% they were vindicated, and that is the Colonel's wife and the artist. Yeah. Anyone that already knew that must have thought I was so silly with all the things that I was saying earlier in this vlog, but there we go. So it turns out it was Anne who actually shot her husband because the artist told her to, so Mr. Redden told her to, and uh, he has her wrapped around his little finger. So yeah there we go the thing that was 100 percent making it so that it couldn't possibly have been then is the timings of everything they were really clever so they used a silencer on the pistol so Anne shot the colonel with the silencer so nobody heard that shot at all and what the artist mr redden had done is set up a tiny explosion in the forest so it made it sound like a shot and even though we did have two people mary and miss marple saying how the shot came from the woods a lot of people just thought well they wouldn't associate it from the vicarage so of course they thought it was coming from the woods and assumed that that was the shot that then killed the colonel and so because of this i mean it's brilliant but that is also what gave them like their alibi because then at 6 30 miss marple had seen them together like they were covered. Also what helped them is the fact that they decided to com admit to the murder that they did commit but because they did it so early and things like that nobody really believed it. So yeah brilliant book. Absolutely loved it. This was such a good time. I had so much fun trying to put this all together and honestly if you had seen that bit where I read that it was Mr. Reddin and that Anna's the one that shot him, my jaw dropped my jaw dropped. If it wasn't for the fact that I was sat in the middle of Starbucks, I would have filmed towards the end of this just to get the reactions. But yeah, I was literally reading it and I was like, the whole time, because I was just like, how? I was so silly to have missed that. And the thing is, it did make sense. Now that you know that it was Mr. Redden who was the mastermind behind it all because he wanted to get rid of the Colonel, so Anne had some money, so that way he was with someone that actually had money and all of this stuff, it makes so much sense because he was always popping up. He was always there. Fantastic book. Really enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read this or if you've got it right in the comments below and yeah i definitely think we're gonna do more of these types of videos because i had so much fun with this let me know if you'd be interested in more i think it was brilliant fun even if it turns out that detective kirsten yeah we did not get that right we we have with previous murder mysteries just not with agatha christie so we're gonna have to try again and redeem ourselves but this was fantastic so absolutely loved it thank you so much for joining along this with me i think if we've made it this far then let's put a coffin emoji because we were solving a murder mystery it was so much fun honestly best um this video because i've already started editing it is probably the most fun that i've had with a video i've said that before about other videos but genuinely i think this is probably my most fun because i just it was great even editing and seeing myself go oh it's 100% not this person they're the only innocent person and I'm literally editing it like wow we did that but it was fun it was great loved it so thank you so much for joining me along this investigation as usual let me know if you've enjoyed it if you want to see more of this do let me know but if you have enjoyed it please don't forget to give it that thumbs up subscribe and comment to let me know that you're here those three things really do help the channel out my social media links will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the next video mm -hmm.